Hello again. This review looks at two versions of the Liebherr LTC 1045 compact mobile crane. Conrad model 210903 is in the colours of the German crane hire company Kran Seller, and model 210909 is in the colours of Burr BV, a Dutch company. Both models come in the same box style with a sticker indicating what's inside. On the box is a Liebherr hologram showing this is a genuine licensed product. The box itself is just a sleeve, so we push out the two expanded polystyrene trays. And when the lid is lifted, the parts are tightly packed inside. The BOA version of the model was missing a part, and that's the transmission underneath the rear axles. So that was sent as a separate part. To fit it, the axles had to be carefully levered off from their mountings. And then with the axles removed, it's a simple enough job to insert the missing part. It pops into place and then the axles are replaced and clipped back into position. For the initial assembly we'll get the burr version in road going formation and the first thing to do is to add the outrigger pads. These just simply screw in and there are four of them. Next we'll pull up the boom a little and raise the boom support so that the boom can rest on it. There's a toolbox which fits on the front of the crane and that just hangs in place. And then there are some mirrors to attach and one goes on the cab. And while we're at it we may as well move the cab forward into its road going position. This is one of the interesting features of the real crane because the cab is on its own telescopic boom. And by moving it forward it's in an ideal position for driving on the road. Next we have another small mirror to fit and strangely for some reason this one is unsilvered. But silver is back in fashion for the mirror that fits on the front of the toolbox. To make the mirror easier to fit it's best to pull the toolbox off. And that's because it does take a bit of pressure to push the mirror in properly. Anyway there it is all fitted so we can put the toolbox back on the front of the crane. So what good is a crane without a hook and the answer is it's no good at all. So armed with that great information we can take some thread off the drum and tie on a hook and in this case we'll just put the single line hook on. There's also a free pulley hook but one thing that is missing is a tying off point for the hook. So in that case we'll just improvise. The last thing to do to get the crane in road going formation is to attach the fly jib. And for that there are a couple of clips to insert on the boom and then the fly jib rests on those clips. But it's not an easy fit so you might need to fiddle with it a bit to get it to look right. Starting underneath there is some detailing but the steering is purely functionally modelled. But the big tyres look good and the plastic wheels look reasonably detailed. The body looks good with plenty of paint and graphics to make it look realistic. And the cab is good too with metal grab rails and a detailed interior. The outrigger beams have got nice chevron graphics and there's good detailing on the carrier deck. The boom ram jacket is plastic but with a good colour match. And the detailing and the graphics on the boom all look reasonably convincing. The lattice part of the fly jib is metal and all of the pulleys on the model are also metal. The Kran Sala version of the model is the same. But this version of the crane does have realistic number plates which the Boer version doesn't have. This red version of the crane is also quite striking and it certainly does look an attractive model. The Liebherr LTC 1045 was first introduced at the Baumer show in 2010 and it was a 45 tonne capacity crane. At the Intermat show in Paris in 2015 the crane was upgraded. It's now the LTC 1050 and with some other improvements it's also now got a 50 tonne maximum capacity. Dimensionally it's almost the same as the previous LTC 1045 so you'd be hard pressed to spot the difference. Let's start by looking at the steering and the front axle has a decent range of movement and at the rear the two axles are linked together. But that does mean that not all of the steering modes of the real crane can be replicated. This is a heavy little model that's mostly metal so it rolls very smoothly. Now that we are on the road let's try the steering out so we'll just try the front axle first. And it does turn albeit a little bit stiffly. If we set all axle steering then it turns very sharply indeed. But as always the mode that creates mayhem and confusion is crab steering and that works well on the model. 
So we've arrived on site and it's time to set up. The beams pull out easily and the pads wind down without showing any unsightly screw threads. The outriggers can also support the model wheels free. Raising the boom is straightforward enough although the ram is very stiff. But of course on the plus side that does mean it will hold any pose. It's the single cab that makes this crane interesting so let's pull the cab into a normal operating position. And while we're at it, let's employ a bit of wrist action and see how the crane turns. Again, it's quite smooth, but it's also quite stiff. One of the advantages of having the cab on its own telescopic boom is that you can adopt a variety of poses. It can be raised and tilted for working at height. But the more interesting and unusual pose is to telescope out and then the cab can sit up high and give the operator a very good view. Also on the cab, the front window is hinged so you can pull out and open it a bit. But perhaps it's not entirely clear that this really is a feature of the model. The top section of the boom ends up quite narrow because it's made of die cast metal. But the sections do telescope quite smoothly. And there's a locking clip which locks each section at the maximum extension. To go for the maximum reach we can add on the fly jib and that clips on to the top of the boom. There are two connections at the bottom which are pinned and plastic pins are supplied for that. Once they're in you fold over the top and clip that in position. There's also a very small pulley which stands up and that acts as a guide for the hoist rope. You can lift just on the lattice section or you can open up the swing away section for the maximum reach. And again it pins into position. The fly jib has another feature which is that it can be set at different cranked angles. And isn't it amazing to see this cranes etc person demonstrate the functionality so wonderfully well. There is another display option available on the model and that is to have a short assembly jib. To achieve that all you need to do is to remove a couple of plastic pins and then pull off most of the jib. This kind of jib might be useful where there's a low headroom. Finally let's check out the winch function and you have to turn the drum by your finger or thumb like this. But if you do too much of it you'll wear your finger right down to the bone. Anyway it's always good to measure the length of your boom. And this one is about 29 inches or 73 centimetres. And if we add on the fly jib we get to 39 inches or 100 centimetres. These are two very good looking versions of the Liebherr LTC 1045 compact mobile crane. And in addition to their good looks they're highly functional and robust models. Although the detailing is not of the highest standard it is very good. And overall these models are still good enough to be regarded as outstanding. <laughs>